Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show on Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter and Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, ready to talk independent pro wrestling and a little bit of comedy. I'm, of course, a uh, video producer with the Renegade Wrestling Alliance, International Wrestling Cartel, and the purveyor of IndieWrestling.us, your indie wrestling superstore. Eventually. Uh, also with me is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. He is Eamon Payton. Hello, Sorgatron. Very excited to join you once again this week. I, you know, I miss I miss the sailor outfit, but I like this picture of you. It's, a, side note, side note, it's not a sailor outfit. It was just my normal suit, but with a sailor hat on. Keep in mind. Well, it compliment it complimented it very well. But if you're not on, on the video uh, uh, version of this, we have a picture of Eamon from from the exact thing that we talked about last week. Uh, the his scary his scary moments. In the middle of the ring, doing the doing the uh, ring announcing. So uh, yeah, I, I think it works well for you. It works very well for you. Professional, exactly. Professional as hell. But uh, this is you know, so you can check us out wrestlingmayhemshow dot com. You subscribe to this and so many other shows over there. A lot of great articles, a lot of other great stuff, interviews. Um, um, not just this. We're getting Christopher Joseph a good like he's a regular basically on Midweek War. Uh, <laughs> when we're talking about Lucha Underground and other shows, actually. You can drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0 or goodtimesatwrestlingmayhemshow.com. And, uh, and, of course, you can join us here. Uh, we do record the Wrestling Mayhem Show and a little bit of this show, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com, uh, starting Tuesdays at 10 p.m. if you want to jump in on the chat room and the wrestling discussion. But uh, we also are doing plenty of interviews, like the one that we're showing tonight. We are pre-recording them various times. You will see Facebook events whenever available on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. Uh, so you you can drop in for those if you would like, uh, including tonight. We're talking with Matt Light, the comedian. Well, there's a lot of stuff that this guy's been into. He is a wrestling fan, and uh, and, and we'll get into that right now. On the line with me right now is, you know, we like to mix things up a little bit, not always getting the wrestlers uh, directly in, in this, but people around wrestling. We had everything from ring announcers to to announcers to bookers to, to, to other video professionals that work around pro wrestling tonight. I think this is our first comedian All right. that's going to join us officially. Matt right. Light, Matt Light Comedy on the Twitter, joining us on Skype tonight. How you doing, man? I am fantastic. How are you doing? Great, great. So you're you're somebody that uh, um, we'll get into it a bit, but you're somebody that that I, I, I you, you got popular because of a certain wrestling thing that we'll touch on a little bit, and of course yes. you got some really cool stuff coming up here on the RVD Comedy Tour. But first, we like to get to know our guests a little bit before we get into the general conversation. So, what is your first memory? or recollection, or the thing that hooked you uh, uh, of pro wrestling? Uh, I remember one time, it was the early 90s, uh, maybe late 80s, it was uh, Hulk Hogan versus uh, Ric Flair, and I was a big Hogan guy, and my uncle used to make fun of me and make me cry because <laughs> he was a Ric Flair guy. Uh, and then it's funny because now, you know, 27 years later, I'm on his side. You know what I mean? So I'm like, yeah, Flair was better. He was right. So, uh, well, my first event I ever went to was SummerSlam in 95, which was amazing. I got to say, I just rewatched SummerSlam 95 because yeah. it, it's in my head because I don't know if you've seen the Finn, Finn uh, Balor uh, uh, video where he says that he often plays Legos watching a VHS of SummerSlam 95. And I've like, never seen that. <laughs> he does that like all the time, and I went back to watch it. I keep forgetting it was here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, it was. It was uh, round two of the ladder match with HBK and Razor. Yeah, <laughs> and I think the main event was like something like I think it was like Kama versus Diesel or something. It was something so, or Mabel versus Diesel. It I think was, it was yeah, Diesel versus Mabel. Uh, you <laughs> had. You had. Oh, we're just going to dive into wrestling talk here. But um, uh, Kane's former Isaac Yankum against uh, uh, Bret Hart. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. the thing that that guy was like in a semi-main in 1995. It's insane. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so I mean, so obviously you're getting a comedy, and and you're you're definitely influenced a bit by by pro wrestling as far as that goes. Like, did you have any other kind of inklings or, or or thoughts of being a pro wrestler or around the business or anything growing up did you like discover indies at any point or anything 
So, I mean, when I was a kid, I always, like, there was two things I wanted to do, and it was to be a comedian, and then it was to be a wrestler. Uh, I'm five foot five, 200 pounds with asthma. <laughs> so I was like, ah, I think I'm going to lean more towards the other way. Yeah. Um, but then, actually, this was maybe, like, about three years ago, I was approached by uh, Bill Molnar, who runs VOW Wrestling, and uh, I did a, a stand-up show for him, and he was like, hey, what do you feel about being a, uh, a manager for us? You seem to uh, have a way with pissing off the audience. And I go, yeah, I I'm looking into that. So uh, I did that for like four or five months. I had a blast with it. Um, but, you know, with my schedule, me traveling a lot, I wasn't able to commit. And I felt like it wasn't right to be, you know, that part-time manager, you know. Right, right, right. Um, and I know we've, we've had a lot of uh, different crossover people. I know Justin Labar, who does a lot of stuff with the Trib, has been, uh, again, just seeing him Saturday night doing stuff like that. So there's a lot of, yeah, a lot of good crossover appeal there. Yeah. So so from the, your, your short-lived experience around indie wrestling, obviously – uh, being on stage as a comedian is a very you know high performance you know when you're by yourself you know for one thing you're not you're you really other than the audience you really don't have anybody to work with out there uh, but how did that compare to what you did uh, ma you know being a manager uh, was there any crossover in, in kind of uh, uh, how you think about it the skill set was it easy in comparison because you had to have the the experience that you already have I don't I don't want to say that it was easy but I think you know I was five, six years already into doing stand-up comedy, so I kind of knew how to make audiences react due to certain trigger words, and I knew words that would, you know, piss people off. Um, it, it, it kind of was easy for me to get them to like me or to hate my guts within, like, the first 12 seconds of me talking. Uh, I think the hardest thing for me wasn't really performing. It was getting, uh, getting over with the actual workers, uh, you know, because these guys are trained, you know, they spend a lot of money to wrestle. They work very hard. Uh, and then, you know, I go out there and they're and they're like, he's not even trained and he's going to go take bumps and he's going to go do this and that. And uh, that was the only thing that I really was kind of like, ah, eh, they don't like me. Uh, but then I, but there's a handful of guys that like I, I'm still good friends with. I love them. But, you know, there's a few guys that definitely gave me the cold shoulder, which I totally understand. You know what I mean, but yeah, you know, that was the hard part. Certainly, certainly, and of course, uh, uh, most will 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 know you from your uh, uh, the viral video from a few months ago. Uh, we yeah. have to talk about this. If you're on the video, I want to pull it up here in a moment. Uh, yeah. But you, there was, uh, I guess, an incident at the Improv here in Pittsburgh, and uh, it, it, tell me a little bit about what happened. Okay, so the video only shows about a minute of what actually happened. Uh, what was supposed to happen was it was supposed to be my last show with the Pittsburgh Improv. Uh, I was getting ready to move to Los Angeles. Uh, however, a week before that show, uh, a couple personal issues happened in my life. Uh, I was unable to move to Pittsburgh. I was unable to move to Los Angeles. So the uh, general manager of the Improv said, how about I take the heat for this one? Uh, I'll come out like Vince McMahon and I'll fire you from the Improv and then go to shake my hand and then you give me the stunner. So it was all pretty much his idea. And I was like, are you sure you want to do this? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, all right. Uh, we did it. We did it for fun. Uh, we posted it online the next day. And um, within 24 hours, it hit 80,000 views, which was insane. Jeez. Amazing. Uh, yeah. A real, real big. Unfortunately, I think I grabbed a low quality version of this for on here. Um, but yeah, it was everywhere. I, I couldn't get away from it on my uh, on my own <laughs> Facebook feed, for instance. And like everybody's hitting me up, and I'm like, guys, that that's here in Pittsburgh. Like, guys, that's the improv here in Pittsburgh. And it's like, guys, that's the the guy whose show we promoted a couple months ago in Pittsburgh. You know? uh, <laughs> yeah. It's so. funny because I went to uh, I was at Taco Bell maybe a month ago and some kid came up to me and he's like, hey, are you the kid that gave that guy the stunner at the improv? I was like, no, nah, wrestling's fake, bro. Get a life. And I walked <laughs> away. <laughs> but in reality, like, I mean, like, I'm one of the biggest marks out there. So, like, for me, for it to go viral and to see that other pro wrestlers were sharing it. It was just like it was pretty cool, you know. It's like you get all the uh, good parts of of uh, being around pro wrestling without the the part where you get hurt, right? Yes, yes, it's <laughs> like it's pretty awesome. I'm like the Eva Marie of comedy. 
I don't have to do anything. I just get the parts. That's awesome. Um, well, of course, you're uh, of course tied to Rob Van Dam's coming to Pittsburgh, and I think you're actually I think you're connected with several stops on his tour. I think I saw you I'm, on the the net. I'm doing the whole tour. The whole with, tour. Yeah, I uh, I did a few dates with him in uh, April. Uh, we got along, and uh, he's a real chill guy, and uh, he's easy to work with, and uh, you know we. We uh, contacted each other, and we're going to be going on, I think it's nine dates in nine days in uh, November, and then we're going to work on a West Coast tour in 2017 early, and then we're going to do like the Texas area, whatever you call that, the South. Uh, We'll do that in like February. So yeah, I'm on all those dates, and uh, I'm really excited, man. It's going to be fun. It's definitely getting out there. I was at Chikara a couple weeks ago, um, all the way on the Jersey uh, border, on the east side of the state, and I got handed a flyer for this that had Vicious Outcast Wrestling, which is again here in the greater Pittsburgh area. And I was like, "Wow, this is okay. This is this is like everywhere." Uh, so that was really cool to see. Um, so so looking forward. To, I haven't seen anything. I did attend uh, McFoley's uh, comedy tour when it stopped by in Pittsburgh and at the gathering of Juggalos, actually, uh, which were a little bit Don't different. Be proud of that. <laughs> A <laughs> little bit different. It was a little bit of a different set, I, you know. You know, a little, little bit different. Uh, but anyways, uh, but so, so it's always kind of interesting because I know, I know, like, like mix one that comes on. He's kind of, he just, he's just a storyteller that tells it in really, really fun ways. I, I don't know if that can be, you know, uh, directly a stand-up comedian kind of idea, but he's just a good performer, right? Yeah, great storyteller. I haven't seen anything yet for Rob Van Dam. You you've experienced this a little bit, I believe. Uh, uh, what can can people expect from RVD set? Uh, you know what? A lot of people don't realize that RVD started doing stand up comedy about ten years ago. Actually, okay. Uh, he, yeah, he's been messing around with the scene a lot. I mean, he lives in Cali, so he does a lot of stuff in California. He's well connected there with a few comedians. Uh, Believe it or not, he he obviously is going to touch on his experiences with the ECW, WWE, but he actually has actual stand-up material that has nothing to do with wrestling, which is, you know, it's a it's a breath of fresh air, you know, and I'm not saying anything taken any way from Mick or, or to Jake the Snake, but these guys are telling road stories, they're great storytellers, and Rob is very, is trying very hard to learn the craft of stand-up comedy as well. Which uh, you know I can appreciate as well. So it's a very fun show, and uh, it's always awesome to see the RVD chant before beforehand. So <laughs> he's great. Yeah, he's awesome. Because that's the thing. Like, like typically you do a tour like this, you're going to have you know the the highest percentage of wrestling fans are going to come out because you're a wrestling name, <laughs> right? Right. I mean, in the long run. Um, but it's great to see that that there is a little bit of crossover happening there. He's not completely, I guess, leaning on the wrestling side of this. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, when I come out there, I'm pretty much the Sunday night heat of the show. Like, nobody cares about me uh, at all. I mean, it's definitely, you know, it's definitely more so an opportunity to meet Rob Van Dam, to be like, oh, my God, I've seen Rob. It's uh, it's definitely more wrestling-driven than anything. So I have to, as a just a regular stand-up comedian, I have to tailor-make my set to mm-hmm. kind of do more wrestling references, like, like if I say like, oh, I got a DUI recently, or like you guys know it as a, a Jeff Hardy, or I'll say things like that, <laughs> and uh, and they'll and it's funny because you'll get the groans, and like for me the groan is just like I'm gonna keep hitting with it, you know what I mean? Until they you win them over, you almost become the the heel, you know what I mean, as the opener to kind of get them ready for RVD, which uh, it works, man. Like I I was nervous that they weren't gonna like me, but. You know, we did St. Louis, Cleveland, Chicago, and and it was great, man. It was a really good time. That's awesome. That's, That's yeah. Awesome. Well, um, at this point, I usually ask the wrestlers, like, in, uh, and and we can extend this. Yeah, you know, tell. I usually ask, uh, what are you watching? What are you kind of uh, uh, catching up on? As far as wrestling goes, what's kind of catching your eye? Um, let me know that, and then I, I'd also like to ask, what's catching your eye? What are you following as far as comedy goes? I think would be very interesting. Okay, uh, I'm not a big indie guy, uh, and I know that's uh, it's not a popular opinion. I just never, I never was around it that much, uh, and I'm very surprised how often I'm watching SmackDown more than than ever. Uh, I think it's because I'm one of the idiots that still keeps believe. 
believing that Dolph Ziggler is finally going to win some sort of championship every week. Uh, and it never happens. It just seems to be he is truly Cleveland of wrestling, which is so frustrating because it's like, you know, I was like, ah, oh, maybe he'll win this. And then I was like, oh, he's going to feud with The Miz. And then it's like, no, okay, great. Now, now he's just dressing up like Colonel Sanders for commercials. It's uh, like I'm a huge Ziggler fan, like to the T. Uh, you know, it's Ziggler, Seth Rollins, and Kevin Owens are my three favorites right now. So I pretty much follow everything that they do. So seeing Kevin with the strap right now is amazing. So, but, oh, awesome. So, what are you following as far as uh, uh, comedy these days? So. I don't know, like, I, I wonder if, like, when you get these interviews and you interview wrestlers, do they kind of say because they're in the business they don't watch as much as they used to? Or do they say, do they say the opposite? Do it they it, all it depends. It? There's a lot of, um, I'm an indie wrestler, I'm in for the art, da, da, da. I don't watch that crap on Monday night, you know? There <laughs> is a lot of that. Um, but they'll take a contract immediately if they call. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but there is a lot of, like, you know, yeah, I'm watching that NXT stuff, or I'm really like what Ring of Honor is doing, or, or something in Japan, or, you know, okay. it, it depends. It's different for every. We've, we've really, really gotten, like, every version of the answer um, over this over the time. So I'm kind of curious. Like, are you, like, rejecting mainstream comedy here? Uh, <laughs> I honestly, I love it. Like, you know, I, I've i worked with, with a lot of big names. You know, I've, I've worked with uh, like Dane Cook. I did, I did some shows with Chris D'Elia. Uh, you know, those, those two guys are really big names. I did Gilbert Godfrey, uh, David Spade, like they're all awesome. Uh, but the guy that I, that I always watch, there's two comics that are my two favorites. Uh, Bill Burr, I think right now is the best in the business. Uh, and then Anthony Jeselnik, uh, he's a darker comedian. Uh, he's actually from Upper St. Clair, uh, in Pittsburgh and he's unreal. Uh, those are, if I were to recommend anybody, it's those two guys. They kind of tell it like it is. Uh, and they're like jerks, but they have charms. They get away with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. you know? And you can tell, like, they're both really big wrestling fans, too. And I think a lot of people don't know this if you don't know a lot about comedy. Most comedians love wrestling. It's pretty much a parallel industry. Like, we all wanted to be that, but we couldn't be, you know? And then you see successful wrestlers. You know, there's Dolph. You know, Piper did it. Like, they all wanted to get into stand up it's like so there's so much common ground there but it's like one has one skill set and the other is built like me so it's like <laughs> and you see that i mean where there's the we watch wrestling guys of course they're you know all comedians that that, that do that show uh, uh got to attend a taping at uh, lucha underground and ran into ron funches you know uh, and, and of course the we watch wrestling guys are into that too there's definitely a huge huge connection there and and, and thank you for clarifying that because i was wondering because yeah. i thought it was just like these are the these are the cool comedians they're into wrestling right <laughs> i know and, and you're mentioning lucha underground my, my favorite indie wrestler right now is joey ryan nice uh, i would pay a billion dollars for the u-porn plex if he would do it to me I think it's the funniest move out there. Uh, but yeah, I think, uh, I think he's amazing. And I, I wish the only thing that my, my biggest gripe and it's the biggest argument that everyone says is with WWE. I just wish it was a little bit more edgier because I'd love to see somebody like him with his gimmick. I think he'd be huge, you know, right now, but yeah. nice, nice. <laughs> and, and there has to be room. They got to do like an R rated, WWE, like they've done these other brands at some point on the network, you know? Just do it one night only. You yeah. know what I mean? Do it yeah. one night only where you just, you know, you got Stone Cold flicking people off. Val Venus is getting his thing chopped off. I don't know. Just something <laughs> funny. Again. You know, the highlights. The highlights, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the stuff I liked when I was seven. That good stuff. <laughs> wow. Um, on that note, so uh, again, typically we ask of the indie wrestlers what's the best and worst thing about indie wrestling. So I'm going to ask you what's the best and worst thing about uh, a stand up comedy? And I have a feeling it would be very similar answers. I'll tell you the same answer is uh, it's the best and the worst thing is that uh, you're out there on your own. Uh, so if you screw up, you can't blame anybody else. You can't blame the audience. Uh, and if you do great and you go over, it's like, it's, it was me. I, I did this. So I think the the fact that it's, you know, the pressure's on you more than you have to rely on somebody else where with wrestling, I mean, if somebody botches something or they screw something up, you know, you're like, bro, you just ruined my whole match. Like for me, it's like, if I slip something, I'm like, 
I got to find a way to get them to still like me. I got to find a way, you know, to right. do it. So right. I like the fact that the pressure's on me. You know what I mean? So it's the ultimate pressure cooker, right? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So again, uh, where can people find you online and, uh, and anywhere else? Uh, you can find me on Megan's Law uh, to catch a predator season five. No, I'm totally, totally just kidding. Uh, you can find me at mattlightcomedy.com. Uh, you can find me Twitter, Instagram, uh, mattlightcomedy. Uh, I have the most amazing Snapchat, too. It's very funny. Uh, it's Mayor Pittsburgh. Uh, I found that. And I also own the website mayorofpittsburgh.com. Somehow, <laughs> some way, uh, it squeaked into my hands, so I took it. Have you had a conversation with Mr. Peduto about that? I have not, but he has had conversations about me over the last year, which is pretty <laughs> funny because they just did a candidate's roast. Um, and I can't say who it was, but I was a ghostwriter for somebody in the higher ups. And they were like, hey, uh, what do you have about Bill? And I was like, tons of stuff. <laughs> and I just totally just like gave them all this material for it. The truth is, though, is like, I think he's a great mayor for the city, and I think he's doing a lot of good things. Uh, and I think he understands that what I'm doing is, is just a gimmick, and uh, it's just to have fun. And I think that's why he's never said anything about me having that site. Also, Mayor Bill Bedudo is a big wrestling fan. Oh, see so, that? Now we're best friends. It all comes together. We have to get him on the show sometime now. So Yeah, <laughs> and if they never open that position, I'll be his vice mayor instead. There you I'll go. Totally you know? There you go. There you go. Is it, hear that, Mary Peduto? We, we, know, we know you listen. We know you're into what we're doing over here. So, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Matt Light. Joining us here on the Indie Mayhem Show. Check them out. And if you're in any of those areas, uh, of course, check out the RVD Comedy Tour when it comes to your town. Uh, and, uh, and and follow the uh, the unofficial mayor of Pittsburgh, Matt Light, wherever he may be. <laughs> thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. Thank you uh, so much to Matt Light. Check him out on the uh, Rob Van Dam Comedy Tour coming to your town here in the Northeast and, uh, and and the other dates he was talking about as well. Keep an eye on them online for, for the latest on that. So we have a little bit of a conversation here for the indie, more indie part of the Indie Mayhem show. Uh, on the line with us, of course, Eamon Payton is still with us as well because he sat through that entire interview and got educated on comedy and wrestling. But also with us from... Uh, <laughs> From California, California, uh, not not the other California that we usually represent on the show, but uh, Alex Cars of ChikaraIn15.com has joined us on the show. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing good, doing good. Uh, coming in from Studio M tonight. A lot of fun. I'm looking forward to talking about some indie wrestling. Awesome. And <laughs> so, so a big thing happened this past weekend with Shakara and Facebook Live. We talked about it a little bit in the uh, what we learned on Wrestling Mayhem Show tonight, uh, but but I think we want to get a little deeper on what are I guess the 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 prospects of this. What does this mean? What what can we do with this? Uh, what can indies do with this? Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about what you experienced and uh, in, 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 in your initial thoughts on it. Right. Well. I'll just start off by saying I am probably going to be gushing over this whole thing because it was, I thought it was amazing. So basically, Chikara had a, a wrestling show from the Wrestle Factory. It's sort of home base out in Philadelphia uh, this past Saturday. Uh, no one's, no, all right, goodbye. That was the name of their recent show. And uh, they, they did a little bit of an interesting thing where they tested a, a different kind of live stream instead of just live streaming from their Chikaratopia service, they actually live streamed on their Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking like the kind of Facebook live that you see in some shows where it's like, Oh, here's like a little clip from a match or something or like, you know, stuff like that. I'm talking like they did the kind of show you would expect to watch probably close to a final cut of what you would probably find about a month or so. Uh, to be fully released, they did that on Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. Like, cameras, you know, multiple cameras, uh, screen graphics, the whole shebang, so to speak. 
and, and this is something I don't know if you've seen some of the stuff that I've been doing on on our Facebook pages for Wrestling Mayhem Show, but this is something that 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 um, if you can do live switching, which obviously they were already doing doing streaming for Chikaratopia, right? Um, mm-hmm. They have the capability of Facebook. It does not take much to do that if you have the technical capabilities to stream. Otherwise, we can do it here with our Wirecast setup here. Um, the setups that I was doing most recently for live streaming for IWC and RWA had that capability. We just weren't anywhere where internet was useful, so we couldn't yeah. apply any of this kind of stuff. Um, but but it's, it, it it does it has lowered the barrier certainly. Now now Chikara is I mean Chikara is a company that's that's doing a video game. Yes, they're doing Indiegogo, but still. Like they're in a position to do a video game. They have comic books. They have a lot of merchandising that they're doing, and a fantastic fan base that we got to see in person at King of King of Trios. But uh, but uh, yeah, I think I think you may see other promotions maybe try this. Um, I can't say that we're going to do it on our end. I I mean I mean it, 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 it there there's a lot more logistics like. Mm-hmm. When you're at a old school building in the middle of Royal Valley, PA, an hour out of town, it, your your options are fairly limited, and yeah. um and 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 uh and we do live streaming with um our uh, some of our colleagues uh in in non wrestling endeavors around here, and uh it, and and usually in the city where it's a place of, uh, with, with some technology behind it, and uh, even then even then you still have some problems, right? So, yeah. I don't know. I, you know, have you seen a lot of uh, either of you seen a lot of companies do this where they do just hold the phone up for a bit for a match? Yeah, I, I've seen it before. Um, I, I've seen it before, and I've, I we've actually thought about doing it before for Inspire, um, like through like Periscope and stuff like that, like kind of exploring just in case of like trying to explore new mediums as, as far as getting your show out there and and getting more exposure so to speak um I'm, I'm glad to see that it was executed in this way though by chikar and that it was executed um seemingly really well they seem to be doing a really good job when it comes to that kind of stuff and um it's it's, it's great to see because i mean yeah i don't even think it was that long ago uh where i think the constant talk when we talked about indie wrestling was about you know the whole idea of like the, that period where everyone was doing eye pay-per-views and they were a very mixed results uh, when it comes to quality and when it comes to, you know, execution. Uh, and, and st- you know, you still see problems today in certain companies with, like, ad pay-per-views and stuff like that, unfortunately. But it's great to see a company like Chikara really kind of do and do it well and, and really execute to a way that uh, is, is of a certain level of, of really good uh, quality. Certainly, certainly. Uh, yeah, and 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 now, and internet is more prevalent. Uh, of course, there are options to do it over cell, but again, that, that's expensive depending on your data plan and and service, and and the reliability becomes an issue as well. But if it's just that you're kind of throwing it up there, that's kind of an okay, acceptable thing. It's not like you uh, you know like the eye pay reviews. You're not saying, hey, pay us ten bucks to watch the show, and it kind of worked, right? Um, you know, it, it, it's a hey, we're gonna you know maybe 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 you broadcast the first like two you know the, the opening uh, curtain matches right just to be like mm-hmm. hey look 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 check this out kind of like a raw uh, or a, a pay per view pre show version of, of, of something so you can have something out there and let let people see oh, hey this is what you're missing right, uh, right. so I mean I, even I look at I was looking over because RWA has a show this weekend but they typically have a match and and without fail they'll have kind of an interview segment that that kind of sets up the the main event whatever's going on for the rest of the show like that could be something you include a little bit right maybe maybe up through that point uh on a facebook live kind of situation uh so i mean again not giving a lot away but maybe even if you watch that be like oh, i should go pick up that digital download in a few days when it comes out right uh and, yeah i think shikari is one that's been really working at it and i think that the the difference is they're very dedicated to it. And I think there's a lot of companies, um, I mean, we struggle with this because we're not the primary, you know, kind of media people. We, we do the shows, we do the videos, and we're, we're trying to support the social media around pushing the, the videos of the shows. But there's, there, there's not a holistic, concerted elf effort by a lot of indies because they don't have the money to pay somebody to do the social media, right? Uh, yeah. Amen, Amen, I know you are kind of like 
like one of the main guys that does a lot of that stuff with Inspire. So there is a little bit of a concentration happening there, right? Everything just seems like kind of scattershot with a lot of these other guys. No, I agree. I, there's more of a the you know certain companies. I'm not just going to name Inspire, but I think companies like you know IWC and others like that have a more fo- consider it more of a focus in, in, in building social media and building that kind of traction in that way. Um, and and other companies don't. Uh, and and some of them are just as are just as successful. But I think that it's an extremely important um, tool. That if you know, I don't know. It's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a tool where it comes to, with such you know, everyone has Twitter, everyone has Facebook at this point, for the most part. So if you're not utilizing those tools, I, I feel like it's just really like a cause lost. Um, and and you know, great in in for Chikara for finding new ways to utilize those tools. Other than you know, and, and I think that's what I've been trying to do, especially with Inspire, is just trying to find new ways to get our name out there a bit more. Certainly. Yeah. Certainly. Um, yeah, just to kind of add to that, I was going to say the biggest thing about any social media thing like that is uh, just exposure. You're just trying to get the promotion's name out there. And I think uh, whether it's in a little local indie company doing a quick Periscope or a Facebook Live of just a little bit of their thing, or Chikara showing their actual show on Facebook. I think it's all just a matter of, uh, of uh, ex- you know, showing what your promotion is capable of. Right. And so, like, I, I just think I, I love what Chikara did. I like what the local indie companies do because at least it's something to get your name out there. Uh, and I think even like wrestlers themselves, I've been noticing more and more Periscope or Facebook Live of like some of the people that I follow on Facebook that are uh, wrestlers. You know, more of them are doing, like, live Q&A, you know, just kind of on their way to a show or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that's a chance to interact with your fans. And I think the same can be done with uh, promotion. I want to point out, Joe, yeah. a friend of the show, Joe Dombrowski, has been doing a Q&A, Q&A this evening on Facebook about, about the uh, new promotion he's working with in, in, in Cleveland. About who do you want to see there? What's going on? You know, mm-hmm. uh, from the looks of things. Uh, so, so I mean, that's yeah. I, I love seeing that 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 people are getting smarter and utilizing this kind of stuff. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see where they go from this. And, and also, there is a consideration, and and uh, there has to be a confidence in your product. I think some people are maybe a little delusional. What delusional? about what their product is. Yeah, I'm going to we do this wrestling show and we're going to put on DVD and we're going to sell a bunch. It's like hey, well, hey, mm, 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 mm. you got to look objectively about what you're yeah. doing. Like I don't think objectively an RWA can't compete with a lot of the can't compete with a Jakar or anything like that. It's also a different audience, right? And that again, that's a that's a thing that we've been trying to work around for a while. It's a good product. It's not a product for I don't want to say the masses. But, but uh, you know, how do you grow that? You know, who, what are you aiming for on something like that? You know, or is it just a niche thing that works really well in West Newton? You know, yeah. um, even though they are doing some fantastic things that I think are uh, have, 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 you know, potential, you know, outside of you. I think everybody, I think I recommend anybody checking out the Sanjay Dutt, Amazing Red, Gory, uh, Shane Andrews stuff that, that's been happening there, right? But uh, again, it's, it's you, know, put, you know, utilizing that platform and, and what are your goals? Is it sales? Is it exposure? Is it YouTube hits? Is it getting people in chairs? And, and what does that do when you are, I'm literally seeing sales for these guys in China and Japan and the UK? That doesn't put butts in seats, but those virtual butts in seats we're kind of talking about on Wrestling Mayhem Show this week, too. Um, so it's very, it's a very interesting trick, and everybody's got to find their version of it. AIW, I think, does a good job of it. Inspire Pro, Chikara does a good job of it. Um, um, IWC, I think, is finding their footing in that right now. Uh, exactly. Like what, especially since they're, they're a year and a half into a new regime. So that regime is ha- is figuring out what the identity of this is now, and how do we utilize certain things? And they got some good minds in there too. So I'm not one of them. <laughs> oh. uh, so speaking of a lot of great stuff happening this weekend. Um, speaking of the RWA, the Regular Wrestling Alliance, RWA Live dot com. 
Um, they're, they, they're having their show this weekend. This is the Fall Free for All. And I know that uh, a lot of friends of the show, some people with Jumping Ship from IWC popping up, like a uh, Marshall Gambino, who, who uh, I'll talk about IWC in a moment as well. Um, this is a name. I don't, I'm not familiar with this name, but it looks like he's been around a bit. Uh, Sean Schultz is going to be debuting. Uh, in okay. the main, in the main event against Shane Andrews. Nice. I know he's also competing on the upcoming. Uh, I saw his name on the upcoming AIW show. So yes, yeah, I see him with AIW. There's some pictures of him with uh, Global Force Impact Wrestling. So uh, a guy that's uh, definitely beginning around making a name for himself. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to see what he can bring against a guy like Shane Andrews. So so that should be pretty good. Um, uh, you know, great stuff. Daniel Eads is a guy to watch out for. He'll be taking on Akuma, not that Akuma from Chikara, uh, who, who tweets a lot during Raw, by the way. So, um, and actually, Sanjay Dutt will be there teaming with um, uh, Generation Dead against Super Hentai Marshall Gambino and her mystery partner. So, looking forward to that. That's this weekend in uh, West Newton, PA, RWA Live.com. Only 15 bucks. It's a nice, cheaper show. Uh, uh, in comparison to a lot of happening in the area. So, um, Eamon, you have Inspire Pro Wrestling happening this weekend. I do. Uh, we got our next event, our Fade to Black 2 event, uh, uh, this weekend in Austin, Texas. That's Sunday, uh, the 25th. Uh, it should be very fun. Uh, we've got a lot of really cool uh, stuff coming ahead, um, including a, a champion versus champion main event of uh, two friends of the show, uh, Ricky Starks, the Inspire Pro champion, taking on uh, the Pure Prestige champion, Keith Lee, who you may have seen on recent episodes of uh, Bring of Honor Wrestling. Um, uh, that should be a, a very big match, and a match I think it's going to be a big culmination of things. Uh, also, TNA's Jade, a.k.a. Mia Yim, will be there. She's making a return for us, and we're very excited to have her uh, on that event as well. And and there's more information over at uh, uh, Twitter at Inspire Pro Res and uh, our website, InspireProWrestling.com. That's this Sunday. Uh, and then uh, one month from then, on the tw- uh, October 29th, is Battle Wars. It's right around the corner, and that's our big event featuring some of the stars of Chicago Pro Wrestling. Uh, I'm sure news uh, about that event will be coming out very soon uh, regarding some of the talents that will be there and some of the matches. Um, and, yeah, we're very excited for that as well. Also, go to, uh, speaking of new ways to promote uh, companies that we were kind of discussing, uh, go to our YouTube, play- YouTube page over at youtube.com slash inspireprovideo. Uh, we've released some kind of previews of uh, for some upcoming matches for this Sunday, uh, some promos and stuff like that. So it's a good way uh, to go check us out over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's also uh, an event I, I think is important to plug um, uh, from somebody you know we've had on the show before uh, before not too long ago. Uh, our good friends at AIW Absolute Intense Wrestling have an event this Friday, uh, the, the 23rd, uh, which is the farewell event for Johnny Gargano, uh, his final match in the independent scene before going full time for WWE. Uh, the main event is uh, Johnny Gargano in a two out of three falls match against his uh, his new wife, uh, Candice LeRae, or I guess Candice Gargano. Um, that'll be amazing, uh, surely. Uh, uh, it, it, it's going to be, a, th- it has the makings of being a really special night, particularly, you know, I know Gargano is extremely important to not just AIW, but Cleveland wrestling and, and that whole kind of scene in general. So uh, it should be very, very interesting. Uh, uh, for that night and that's uh this friday the 23rd great night of wrestling it's gonna be a party i say i'm posting that his family and friends are all gonna be there uh i really wish i could make it up for it but just not gonna be able to make that cleveland drive uh but uh go check it out if you're able to it's the last chance to see him free (laughs) you know not free free, but but like like free from wwe you know (laughs) Yeah. Of sorts. Free from the man. Free from the man and be able to go the wrestle his wife. So looking forward to that. Uh, maybe that'll be worth picking up on DVD here or Smart Mark Video or wherever those guys are. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Alex Cars, Chikarin15.com. That's, yep. that's a thumbs up. Um, as a thumbs up, sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, Chikarin15, I'm going to be working on new episode this week. Uh, also on a new uh, episode of Occupy Pro Wrestling podcast where I will finally Sorg, I'm finally going to get that interview that we did back in May up for the world to hear it'll go. be amazing uh, I'm also glad uh, Eamon brought up the Inspire Pro uh, show that's coming up this weekend because Pick'em League is finally back up and running for 
Occupy Pro Wrestling and Inspire Pro is one of the promotions that I keep track of. So nice. uh, keep an eye out for the email and Tumblr posts on that. Yes. Go check it out. And of course, Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, dot com for Eamon. Hear his voice on Smart Mark Video and those YouTube matches they got up. Yes, indeed. <laughs> That's a great way to hear my voice. Uh, yeah, go check it out. And of course, uh, uh, IndieWrestling.us for all the things that we produce from Sorgatron Media. And you can find some IWC and RWA across highspots.com, smartmarkvideo.com as well. Uh, so uh, from that, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. Thank you so much. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.